time to do a little prep work. Got to get the uh, walls ready for painting. I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to paint or have somebody paint, but I figured I'd go ahead and tape up everything. So let's hit the baseboards first. Make sure we wipe it down, get all this dust off here. Clean adhesion. Frog tape. Well, I find out this stuff is pretty good. Works a lot better than some of the other tapes on the market that I've tried. Continue that down for the rest of the room. All right, I'm gonna get the top of these doors. Now, most people don't paint, or excuse me, don't tape up the top of the doors, and if you look on top of yours, you probably won't see any uh, white up there, because most painters just paint right over top of it. But I got plenty of tape left, so I figured might as well tape those up too. Follow the same concept on the baseboard. Yeah, see this thing has got tan paint all over. The one good thing about doing these up here is you don't have to be as precise because nobody's really looking up here and you're pretty much the only one that knows that you taped off up here. So if you want to do some practice taping, this is the best place to do it up here. Taking all these outlets and sockets off makes it so you don't have to tape up around them. You can just paint behind them. Don't have to be too precise. Just paint back here. And then cover that right back up. Nobody will see any kind of imperfections. All right, so one good thing about redoing the floor is I don't have to worry about covering the floor up. I don't have to put any papers down. I can actually make a mess because all this is coming up anyway. So, a little nasty mess as I pour paint, spillage and overflow and all of that, but none of it matters because all of this is gonna be coming up anyway. Now, I'm no professional painter and don't hold me accountable for this, but I've read on YouTube, watched on YouTube and did a little study and I found out that the best way to paint is to go in like a V or a W pattern. Get plenty of paint on there. And kind of do a V or W. And what this does is help eliminate those lines and those streaks that you get going straight up and down. Also spreads the paint a little better. So it's been working well. And a couple of rooms that I painted in the house. So Continuing with this, and so far so good.
first. All right, so since the carpet tiles are gonna go all the way up to the door, we'll cut out some of the carpet, leaving some, maybe an inch or two excess to make sure we got something to work with. It's time to put the two together. We'll do the same thing in front of the closet. that about three or four more times. All right, so I got all the carpet tiles put down. Good to go in the room. Now I gotta do some trimming. So bought this from Lowe's. It was actually 72 inches, I think. So I needed to cut it. And I'll show you outside how I cut this. But it's gonna sit right in here. Like so. And attach the carpet to it and tack it all down. But that's how it's gonna sit. And when it's done, it's going to look like this. So that piece that was under here, the carpet gets tacked down to that. Then that part that was right here gets banged down on top of the carpet. And that's what that looks like after it gets done. So here's the piece after I've sliced off 32 inches for the closet. I need another 32, another 30 inches, excuse me, for the door. And as you can see, I got a makeshift workhorse. Just a little backyard project, so no need to go buying a, a full workhorse. But nice hacksaw. We'll slice right through this metal. I just need to metal, measure off 30 inches, cut it, and we're good to go. Ready for the doorway. 30 inches. together as adults to Oakland to the Coliseum for the first time 
This was a historic Thursday night game where we beat the Chiefs last minute, last second rather on a field goal, or point after touchdown. So it was phenomenal. So I had to get it framed, put this up, and I want to be looking at this when I watch TV. So when I'm sitting on my couch, looking at TV, I want that right over the top of TV. So that's why I put that there. Of course, I got my TV, I got a little memorabilia here. A lot of this stuff I got as gifts. The book was a gift. I got some Super Bowl rings as a gift. The water bottle I got when we were in Vegas. And then just some, some knickknacks. So moving to our left a little bit. Raiders versus Chargers game. First time ever in Allegiant Stadium. This was the first year of them having fans in the stadium. Another historic game. Took us to the playoffs for the first time in five years. My clock, my mother made that, so I had to put that in there. I'm gonna see that every time I walk in. Thanks, Mom, appreciate that. This is my wall that, of pictures that I took personally, different places, Nashville, Oakland, LA, Oakland, Atlanta, a little memorabilia from a friend of mine. Of course, you guys know Darren Waller. And then a nice little gift here. Can't forget my golf bag. Represent Raider Nation even when I'm on the course. Even with my butter head cover. All Raiders decked out. So I represent when I'm on the golf course. Continue to move around. Got that off Etsy. I wanted something that wouldn't break up the flow of the window since it was white. As you can see, everything in here is either silver, black, or white. That represent Raider Nation. That's nice little Raiders Ottoman. It's actually a cooler, so I can take that with me. Put some cold drinks in there. Whenever tailgating or going out to any kind of event. Accent wall on the back here. Matt jersey, I used to wear that, but once he got traded, still want to represent because it was an iconic pick for us, and he is a phenomenon. So went ahead and put him up there. A Raiders logo, and then three of my favorite Raiders players. Favorite player of all time, Mr. Raider himself, as you know, Mr. Tim Brown, Howie Long, Bo Jackson. Also, personal picture I took in front of Legion Stadium. Represent Raider Nation. Of course, my man Tim Brown had to get him framed. And then a couple more little knickknacks. Right over here on the side. Raiders lamp. Crank that on for you. Got a motorcycle hammer where I actually met one of our players. In the location I was working at, he was a linebacker for us. Only played one or two years, but it was still good to see him. And then a couple little things that I found running around are Raiders coasters. I actually got a Raiders tee marker. I was at the golf course and saw some Raiders memorabilia, and I said, oh man, let's see if you got one of these. Backside, say Raiders, and then this pin got that while we were at the Allegiant Stadium. Us against the Chargers. That was the last pin they had on the counter, so I had to get that. Also got my Raiders fleece blanket. This was my housewarming gift from a good friend of mine. You know, most housewarming parties you have a lot of different things that you need for the house. Good friend of mine, thanks, Donald, my man. Gave me this Raiders fleece. I loved it ever since. And then, of course, my floor. All right, when I'm sitting down watching TV, my Raiders floor is going to face me. My logo, my shields are looking at me. It took me almost three years to find this floor. And once I found it, I had to have it. You saw that it's all facing me. So the same thing happens when I walk in. Logos are facing when I first walk in. So thanks again for joining me on this transformation. Of course, the room is never finished, so if you see anything out there that you think would be a great addition to the room, please leave it in the comments and let me know so I can continue to evolve my Raiders man cave.